Hi, and welcome to another video. Today, let's talk about developing plugins for Windows. I'm just working on an application where I want to have an option to connect to a MIDI device and get some messages from it or send some messages to it. And for that, we have this plugin Flutter MIDI command, but it unfortunately doesn't support Windows. So I decided to do Windows support on my own. And they also implemented this Flutter MIDI command platform interface over here, which I can then implement. And that's what I'm doing in my plugin. So I'm just using whatever they defined for the methods name and stuff like that, which possibly makes it later in the future possible to integrate my plugin with this their plugin that they have. I've checked a couple of methods how I could implement it. And the first obvious choice was to try Dart FFI, but with Dart FFI, there was a problem. Um, I've also used the Win32 library on top of it, um, which is mapping some C++ libraries. And that would be a very simple uh, solution. However, it is not possible right now to have a callback from another thread than Dart thread in C, call this callback later on and pass data to Dart. So if I'm calling a function on C from Dart and I'm passing it a callback, then this callback has to be called from the same thread, not from another C thread, because that will not work. And that's why my Win32 simple solution with Dart FFI just couldn't work. There is a solution around it. So I have an open issue over here on the Win32 library on GitHub for it. Um, however, right now this is just not possible. And there is a workaround over here um, outlined by this guy where it's possible to use some native ports and stuff. However, it still requires to write some CC++ to make it work. So I decided just to try out and do everything with method channels. I have to admit that was a little bit of a struggle. So in this video, I would like to just tell you a little bit how the data is passed or in what way data is passed, maybe even in what format the data is passed from that to C and on the other way. I will not go through the method channels and stuff. Maybe there will be another video in future for that. How does it work? So let's assume that um, if you don't know it, just go to the docs learn about method channels right now and come back here. Here we have this important function, which is handle method call. And this thing you can see is operating on this encodable values. And that's, that's the type that we have to use to pass data between the two languages. So that's what the C language here will understand. And so here you can see that in this method, we get um, a result parameter, which we can use to set success and send some data back to Dart, for which we have to use again this encodable value. And also we can, for example, for an undefined method called this not implemented. And then here I have a simple implementation of a method called get devices. So this will take a list of devices, MIDI devices connected to a machine. And for that, you can see I have this encodable list, which is just a std list on the C++ um, from the C++ standard library. And then we just have to encode it with value over here and pass it to success. This is simple enough. If we have a look into get devices down here, then it does a little bit of magic over here. But the whole point is that we have this encodable list. In the end, we return it. And here, this method get device is basically where we add, we use this pushback method because again, encodable list is just a list or a vector actually. In C++, it's called a vector. So we can call this pushback method on it and we can add uh, an element which is coming from this method. And in this method, you can see that we have this encodable value over here which is returned and building the response is a little bit more complicated here. So every value have to be wrapped with this encodable value. We can have editable maps, editable list, but every value, whether it's a key or a value, you can see this is a map. So these are values and keys over here. They have to be wrapped with this encodable value. So without it, it will not work because the interface is a editable map. We will look into it in a moment. It's actually a map and standard library C++ map, which takes two encodable values for key and for value. And the same thing goes for editable list. So every editable list you can see also has to be wrapped in this encodable value. And then something like that. So we have this map wrapped with encodable value. 
with each key and each value wrapped with encodable value, including the lists. And if a list has some elements, then these elements also are wrapped over here, if you can see, with encodable values. Ah, oh, over here, sorry. And inside we have another map and this map also, again, again. So it's getting a little bit tedious. Here I'm using a namespace, so it's probably not a good practice, but it helps me a lot over here instead of writing everywhere this flutter and two semicolons. So in case you would be wondering why something doesn't work or it doesn't find this type, you may need to type this flutter semicolon semicolon or just do the same thing like I did over here. So the namespace, oh sorry, using namespace flutter. And when you are making in C++, so if you never worked with C++, you also will have to define this headers file over here and define kind of an interface for all your methods and stuff, so don't forget about that. So this is one-way communication, but there is also communication from um, Dart to C++. And that took me a little bit of time to figure out, a couple of hours actually, um, with how does it work. So I have the second method, which is connect to device over here. And just let's have a look what happens here. So we have this arguments, um, well, it's, I guess it's a pointer. And we get these arguments out of this method called dot arguments. And method called dot arguments, it's holding an encodable value. And from this encodable value, we have to get the arguments, which are of the type encodable map right now. And for that, we have to use this standard get if method. So if this exists in, so maybe now we have to actually talk what the encodable value is, because that's not so easy. So for that, let's try to find it encodable value dot h, there we go. This is where it's defined, so, and you can see that we have this encodable list and encodable map over here, which are just um, aliases for types. So encodable list is a vector of encodable values, and the map is just a map of encodable value key to encodable value value. <laughs> and then here is a very important thing. So the encodable value over here, it's actually nothing more than the variant in C++ language. And variant in C++ language is a way to make a variable be able to hold different types of data. So you can have one variable, and this variable can be all of all these types. If, if you're having the encodable value, then you need to know what type it can hold. Like in Dart, it's simple because you just have the type dynamic, like with JSON, for example, and then you're casting it. But here we don't have a dynamic type like this. And instead we use this variant. And then we have to know what type to expect. And when we know what type to expect and what value we have, then we can try to get it. If you look into the documentation of variant over here, then you can learn how we can use this encodable value then because anything that is in, that is documented over here is basically working for it. And then if you look at different methods and so on, then you will have lots of examples of how to do stuff. So for example, here they show you how to get a value, an actual value, for example, an integer from the variant. And in order to do it, you have to use this get function over here. And you need to know that this integer is there. So you need to specify here the type you can also use, for example, this get with zero, and then this will basically do the same as this. But you have to know that the that zero is an index of the first type of your variant. So you can see that the variant is defined here, and it has two types, int and float. So zero is basically int, and one is float. And then it's also, <laughs> at the beginning, it was really hard for me to find out what type there actually is. But if you look over here, you have a couple of very interesting things, like you have this index, and this will return you an index of what type it's actually holding. So if you have, for example, two types, and you would call the index, and inside of it you have at the moment float, then it will return you one. 
of it would be an integer inside of it and it will return you zero. Um, and for example, for checking whether uh, some type is there, you can use, I think, this variant alternative, obtains the type of an alternative specified by its index, it compiles them, okay, that's maybe not it. Ah, here, sorry, holds alternative, yes. So this checks if variant currently holds a given type. Um, for more information, just come here to this documentation, scroll through it and read it. Um, it's actually very interesting, it's more like a union. Okay. But being back, that's maybe everything I think we need to know at this point about encodable value. Also, here at the documentation, they give you what the types relate to. Um, for the index zero, for example, you have this monostate, which is uh, understood as a null, and so on, so on, so on. And here they also give you a little bit of an example how we can build um, different structures. So if in Dart you have something like this, then with uncountable values you have to write it in this way. Tedious, annoying, but that's how it is. So from the Dart side, in this method over here, so I have this connect to device method, and if we look into my example application, you can see I have these two buttons over here, and on this button connect, I have this on press over here, and as you can see, I have this underscore MIDI command, and then I call the connect to device. If we have a look into that, you can see I have this, uh, or this is not what I implemented, here is the platform that connect to device. Then the implementation of this is just basically calling this method channel with the uh, method connect to device. If we go back here, also what I am passing to this method is a type of MIDI device over here, and the type MIDI device over here, it's holding a couple of values, it has a string, string, string type, and then inside of this method over here, the platform channels and stuff, this method to dictionary is called. So what is passed to C is basically this map over here with four values, and they are of the type like string, 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 and boolean. So this is what is passed to the C code. So now if we have a look over here, what I am doing is, and I don't know if it's a final version yet, later we will see. I probably will move this to a method, but first I have these arguments which are defined over here. So we get we use this get if, so if editable map exists in this type, uh, sorry, in this returned thing from method call dot arguments. So this is the encodable value. And this is basically a variant in C++. And then if it's it's holding encodable map, then get if will basically returns it here to arguments. Secondary, over here in the method. First, what I have to do is I have to find um, inside of these arguments my device because there is a device object and this device object has this couple of values. And in order to find the device inside of this, inside of it, then I have to call this argument. Um, this is basically calling to a function like dot in Dart. So this is an object and this is like a dot in Dart. Then we have this method find on it. We give it this encodable value device. You have to find it by the encodable value here. Not Don't forget that. And finally, just call a second on all of it what's returned from it. Then I want to find a specific device. Um, and for that, I have to do is static cast <laughs> on encodable map. And then I have to basically supply it an argument. And this argument is basically, I'm using this get method over here because I know there is an encodable map inside of this device value, which is an encodable value here. So I have encodable value and from that I'm getting again this map. I'm not 100% sure if this static cast is needed here right now. I will experiment maybe later. Looks like this should already have an encodable map over here. So this might be redundant <laughs> at this point. So next, um, from the object that we've seen before over here. So a device will have an ID and it's found by this string ID. And this is what I want to get. So first I have this ID value. So now I know that I have a map over here. Remember that this is only a standard library C++ map. So on this map, I can basically use this operator to get 
a specific value from a key. You cannot just supply it a string over here because it's actually an encodable value of ID and it will find this element by this encodable value and not by the string. This took me some time here um, to figure this out. And then finally, you can get the ID by using again this std get, and then I know that it will be of a type string because here the ID is of a type string, the BD device that was passed. So I'm just passing it an argument, the ID value over here. And finally, this is just not important anymore, but this strange thing over here is parsing. So parsing the ID that is a string to an ID that would be an integer. So this std stoi is actually a parsing method. And that's it. And thanks to that now, if I run this application, I can connect the device. Now, at the moment, uh, if you would see the, the implementation of the method, so it's not yet running on another thread to wait for messages. Um, so it's currently blocking the Dart thread from the C thread, but give me a moment to try to play something on my piano. As you can see this is actually working and some messages are coming when I pushed keys on my piano. I think that's it. So um, this code, the, the source code that I'm working on here, it's already publicly available even though it's not ready yet. On my GitHub, I think if I don't forget, there will be a link in the description. And I hope it will help someone not to waste so much time as I did. Oh well, I'll code you to death and see you. Bye bye.